Hello everyone, in this video we are going to look at Streamlit and how we can plot some charts using it. I came across Streamlit some time back and spent some time on the documentation to see what it is and how it works. To give an honest review, it's a very powerful framework. I find it very easy to code and you can do a lot of things using Streamlit. I also wrote an article about it on uh, Towards Data Science. Uh, I will put the link in the description below. To get started with Streamlit, first you need to install it. That we, that you can do by simply using the pip install command. And when once you're done with this, uh, run the Streamlit hello, which will open up your browser and says welcome to Streamlit. All right. So in this video, we are going to look at a data set that I have taken from Analytics Vidya, the food demand forecasting data set, and we are going to plot some charts. With this data set all right let's look at the code now first we are importing all the necessary libraries and then we have the title uh, displaying the name of the data set after that we have three functions to load the data set so this particular data set when you download you will you will be having three csv files so i've created one fun one function for each one function for each csv file all right so we have an annotation at the top which is quite important you can read about this in detail over here so this is uh, effortless caching and you can see how it works so what it does actually is it stores the result in the local cache and whenever the function is called if the three values which these are the three values if they aren't changed then it's going to skip executing the function all right and it reads the output from the local cache and passes it to the caller all right so you can uh, go through this uh, bit in the documentation and uh, for for better understanding all right So once we have the three functions ready, we are going to call them. So I'm taking only thousand rows from the data set for demo purposes. You can take the entire uh, number of rows that you have. All right. So the first uh, CSV file is of weekly demand data and I have a subheader and I have a st dot write function. So these two things in these two uh, lines of code is what you see over here this is the subheader and this is the st dot write function all right that displays the data set uh, i've taken only thousand rows so uh, these will be the thousand rows right all right next we are going to plot uh, these charts now uh, so uh, streamlit comes with a set of inbuilt functions like bar chart uh, line chart and area chart so the first one i'm using is the bar chart on the column number of orders all right so when you save st dot bar chart this is what you will be seeing all right so this particular uh, plot you can save it as an svg as a png and you have other options as well all right the next thing the next plot that we have is an histogram so what i've done is i've taken a data frame first uh, and I'm taking only the first 200 rows uh, of the columns, number of orders, checkout price, and the base price. And then I'm calling the hist dot function, df dot hist function from the pie plot. All right. So when I when I use st dot pie plot, it actually plots it on the Streamlit app, right here. So these are the three histograms that we have uh, made. So and we have imported pie plot at the top, right? So if you do plt.show, uh, it will be shown uh, on your terminal. Okay. The next what I have is I've taken the same data frame and I'm plotting a line chart. Let's look at that. So this is the line chart. As you can see, the base price and the checkout price are almost overlapping, indicating that they are uh, quite same. Only some of the values are changing, but the number of our orders is you know quite different and it should be so th that is for you know uh, as a reference point next what we have uh, what I'm doing is I'm doing the area chart chart as well 
So for this, I've taken a data frame with only the first 40 rows of the uh, of this particular data set. And I'm taking two columns only, the number of orders and the base price. So as you can see, this is the area chart. So if I take uh, the checkout price as well, then it's going to overlap since we saw it in the line chart that uh, the checkout price and the base price are quite same and the values are quite same. All right. So this is uh, what we, these are different plots that you can use, that you can visualize on Streamlit app. All right. Uh, the next thing that we have is the center information. That is the second CSV file. So what I've done is I have a checkbox here. So when I click on this, it shows me the data. Now in Streamlit, you can do this in, an, in a very efficient and a simple way. So let's see that. So I have a subheader saying center information and I have a checkbox. So in three simple lines of code, you can perform the click function. All right. So if st.checkbox is clicked, you just write the data. All right. That we had uh, first read from the uh, function. All right. So as you can see, you do not have to write any JavaScript or an online on click function in HTML or anything. You can do this simply by saying if st.checkbox is, is true, just write, write all the data that we imported that we read. All right. All right. Next, what we have is uh, I've done two charts, which are the bar charts on region code and center type. All right. So let's see that. So this is the region code. You can zoom in, zoom out. So that's the uh, speciality about these uh, plots that it's quite interactive. You can, as you hover over, over, over this, you can see different values. You can zoom in, zoom out, you can drag. All right. And center type chart uh, is, is a bar chart, you know, it's a horizontal bar chart and it has only three center types, A, B and C. All right. Next, what we have is I'm using Plotly uh, uh, to plot a chart, something that looks like this with region code and the center ID. All right. So that we can do by creating a list. So I've created a, created a list of center id and region code the label labels are center id and region code and i'm using a function create dist, dist plot and i'm passing that uh, list the group labels and the bin size you can change the bin size you can uh, explore a little bit and after that i'm using st the streamlit dot plotly chart function all right and that displays it here all right Next uh, data set that we uh, CSV file that we have is of meal information. So uh, this data, this particular uh, CSV file does not contain much information. So I've just, uh, I'm just plotting a simple bar chart again, a horizontal bar chart. So of, uh, of cuisine, all right. It has four different types of cuisine. Okay, so I've created a button here that says click to see categories of meal. So these are the categories. All right. So when I click on this, it again shows me a horizontal bar chart with different types of categories. All right. So similarly, uh, in a similar way, how we did for checkbox, you can do it for button also. So I've created a button that says click to see categories and I've assigned it to a variable agree. So if agree, meaning that if I've clicked on this particular button, just display the bar chart. All right. And the data that we have is category. All right. The next part that I wanted to show you was streamlit components. So as you see at the top, we use ST dot title. All right. That uh, displays food demand forecasting analytics with there. So when you click, when you inspect this, When you hover over this, it says it's an H1 tag. It's an H1, H, H1 tag in HTML. All right. So in the code, when you call the st.title, it actually renders an HTML 
tag the HTML h1 tag at the back and then displays it on our browser all right so, but sometimes uh, there might be a situation where you want to you where you want to add your custom HTML on your streamlit app right so you can do that by something called a streamlit components all right so I've created this uh, choose file and upload button using my own custom custom HTML so what if I click on this it, uh, so I can choose a file now and if I give some functionality to this upload button you can send this file to a database if you want and you can do other uh, similar things also so you can do this by uh, something called a streamlit components and I'm importing this uh, here see import streamlit dot components right so you have uh, you have something called as components.html where you pass a string and in that string you can write your HTML code right so this is the HTML part which you can see over here all right so I have not added any I did not add any CSS part to it that you can do on your own also yes so this is what I wanted to show you in this particular video I have this particular code on my github and I'll put the link for the article also in the description below. Alright, thank you.